Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Tonight we're going to spend a little time learning about navigation on OpenTX radios. If you're brand new to OpenTX, you're thinking about getting one of these radios, one of the first things you'll want to learn how to do is to navigate the radio. And I can tell you it can be a little daunting. When you look at all the different screens and options, it's real easy to get lost in what's going on if you don't have a fundamental understanding or navigation map on how to move around and how to find things that you want to manipulate on the radio. Before we start pressing buttons though, I'd like to give a brief little intro about two things that you'll hear about constantly when you get involved with OpenTX. The first one is you'll hear the phrase OpenTX all the time. The second thing you'll hear is OpenTX Companion. The first one, OpenTX, is a reference to the firmware. Firmware is software that lives on the radio itself. It's what operates the radio. It's the software that lives between the hardware and you. It identifies and defines the radio hardware, hardware settings. It helps manage the models that are on the radio and the model settings. And it performs the software functions required to translate your physical movements on the radio from your hands out through the antenna and into your airplane. One little caveat I have to throw out, if you have a multi-protocol radio like this TX16S, there's also a second firmware that goes on the multi-protocol module itself. That's really outside the scope of this video because it doesn't really have anything to do with the primary configuration or navigation of the radio itself. So we're not going to cover that today. Just be aware, you may hear that there's an MPM or a second firmware or a radio firmware on these multi-protocol equipped radios. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen. The next phrase you'll hear constantly when you're involved in OpenTX is OpenTX Companion. Companion is a reference to a desktop application that doesn't live on your radio, it lives on your computer. And the job of Companion is to act as an interface between your desktop and the radio. It lets you do things like back up your radio and your radio settings. It allows you to back up your models. It helps you keep OpenTX firmware on the radio itself updated and it allows you to back up things like your SD card. It's available on Windows, Linux, and Mac, and it is not required to use an OpenTX radio. You can use an OpenTX radio without ever touching Companion. That said, I highly recommend learning OpenTX Companion because it will save a lot of time and it'll make managing your radio a lot easier. Okay, let's take a look at navigation. There are four primary configuration categories in OpenTX, and they're all accessible from the home screen. This is the home screen. This screen appears after you power on the radio, and it starts with the last model you selected when you turn the radio off. You can return to the home screen by repeatedly pressing the return button, which is right here, until the screen stops changing. Think of this home screen like the home screen on your smartphone. When you first turn your phone on and clear out any errors or notifications and get rid of any open windows in your way, that's what you're left with is the home screen. So all the navigation starts from there. The four major categories are system, which is activated with the system button, model, which is activated with the model button, model selection, which is activated with a long press of the jog dial, and the screen setup, which is activated by pressing this button on the bottom left, which is labeled as Tele. There are a couple of other secondary screens known as channel monitors, reset, statistics, and about, those are all accessible with the long press on the jog dial, but they're not a primary configuration category in the radio, so I'm not going to cover them in today's video. We'll start off with the system settings. So when you click the system button over here on the left, you'll notice along the top of the radio, there are a set of icons. I refer to them as tabs. We'll cover each one of them in detail, but you navigate from this tab to this tab to this tab by pressing the page key. Now some radios have two page keys, some have only one. In my case, I've got two, so I've got a page right and I've got a page left. If you have a radio that has only one page button, you short press it to go right and then you long press it to go left. When I look at this bar across the top, I always think of a web browser and having multiple tabs open. So this is a tab, this is a tab, this is a tab, and on a web browser, you can go back and forth amongst them. And OpenTX navigation is no different. So when you look at this row of icons along the top, think of them as tabs that you navigate to with your page buttons. You can see the first tab that we're on says Tools, and in the Tools menu, 
you have built-in software that enables configuration of certain receivers and sensors. For example, if you bind a Fersky S6R receiver, that receiver has built-in stabilization, and there's a script in here right now, number six. You just run this script, and you can configure the stabilizer directly from the radio. The next page is an SD card file browser. It's a built-in file browser that allows you to see the contents of your SD card. You can use this in the field, for example, to make sure your logs are being created, or if you copied a picture onto your radio and you want to make sure it's in your images folder, you can highlight that and just click your jog dial and see that your image is on the radio. The next tab is the radio setup tab, and it provides access to things like sounds, haptics, screen brightness, stick mode, channel order, measurement units, and other parameters that govern basic radio operations. Again, if you have a smartphone, think of your system settings on your phone. It's the same basic concept, screen brightness, volume, when you get alerts and alarms, that type of thing. The next tab is called Global Functions. Global Functions assign actions to switches, knobs, and pots across all models. So for example, if you want a particular sound to play every time you click a switch, you could, for every model, no matter what model you have selected, you can set that up in Global Functions. One of the Global Functions I use on all of my OpenTX radios is for Global Function 1, when the radio is turned on, I want the volume controlled by my S1 pot, which I've named VOL. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And then this little box indicates that it's enabled. So global functions apply to all models. The next tab is the trainer tab, and it maps the student radio to the master radio and defines master radio actions when the control is passed over to the student. It's a very basic tab, but this is where you set up your trainer inputs when you're using the, a buddy box system, either wired or wireless. And then the final tab is the hardware and calibration tab. There's actually a lot going on in here, but the primary function is to identify what hardware is in the radio. So you can see in my case, I've got four sticks, the rudder, elevator, throttle, and aileron. Those are all named. And then my pots. Notice earlier in the global function screen, I said that I renamed my S1 pot. This is where I did that. So I went into my hardware tab and I clicked on S1 and I named it VOL. So from now on in my radio, when I'm working in my settings, my S1 is referred to as VOL. All of your switches are identified on this screen as well, and they're identified as three position, two position, or a momentary switch like this toggle switch right here. In the hardware tab, you'll also notice some calibration options. I've got battery calibration down here, and I've got the main radio calibration up top. When I click on that, the calibration option maps the mechanical range of movement to the minimum and maximum electrical outputs for all analog sources, including your sticks, pots, and your multi-position switches. It's highly recommended when you first get a radio to run through the hardware calibration, and there is a video on the channel showing you how to do that in detail. For those of you paying close attention, you'll notice there is one more tab. It's the information tab. It doesn't really have anything to do with programming the radio itself, but it gives information about the firmware, including the revision, when it was compiled, and the options it was compiled with. Okay, that's it for the system category. The next major category is models. You get there by clicking on the model button, and you'll notice just like in the system settings, you have a row of icons across the top, and we'll go through them one by one. The first tab is Model Setup, and it provides the basic parameters of your model, including your model name, image, timers, and it's where you bind your radio to your receiver. And you also can set up switch warnings on this screen as well. If you use a stock OpenTX firmware, you should notice a helicopter tab up here. I don't have that tab because I downloaded a customized firmware that removes the helicopter options because I don't fly helicopter. So for that reason, I can't show you that tab. But if you see that up here, don't be confused. It's because you have a stock firmware and I don't. The next tab is flight modes. Flight modes allow some very customized actions on OpenTX. I'm not going to go through them in today's video. Just be aware of that's where they are. And also understand that you don't need to use flight modes for a basic model configuration. When you get to the point where flight modes matter, you'll know it and you'll do the reading to learn how to do it. But this is where you find flight modes. It's on the second tab of the model setup. The next tab is called Inputs, and this tab maps your physical controls or sources to a name that's usable throughout the rest of the radio. There are some logical sources here too, like battery, trainer inputs, and channel outputs, but most of the sources you'll see are physical, like the aileron stick, the elevator, throttle, rudder, 
and any of your switches or pots or sliders. At this stage of the game, it's probably best to focus on the physical control surfaces like your aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder, because this is the tab where you'll set up things like dual rates. The next tab is mixes. On the mixes tab, you can map your inputs to channels or pins on your receiver. When you assign a mix and use inputs as a source, you are creating a link between the physical control and the output pin on your RX. The mixer is also the primary place to blend controls together. So if you need an Elevon, VTEL, Flapperon, Differential Thrust, Knife Edge Mix, Aileron to Elevator for 3D, Spoilers, Crow, Flap Elevator, all of that stuff happens in the mixer. You can see in this example, my Aileron is on channel one because I have an input source, Aileron, assigned to channel one. So this stick is connected through radio waves to the receiver channel one pin. Likewise, my elevator input right here is connected to channel two because it's assigned right here in the mixer. So if I look at my receiver, I'll connect my elevator servo to channel two. The mixer is what assigns the input to the channel. This is a super important concept because this is the page where you connect your input or your stick to the output on your receiver. The next page is outputs. For most setups, this is where you're going to reverse a servo if you have a servo moving the wrong direction. It's also the final place to define travel endpoints, but primarily when you're first getting started, this is used to reverse your servos. And you can do that by clicking a channel and coming all the way over here to this little arrow right there and clicking your jog dial. And that when that arrow flips to go the other way, you just reverse to servo. The next tab is curves. Curves are a lot simpler than most people think. They specify lines which can govern endpoints and they change the relationship between your inputs and outputs. I'm not gonna go through curve configurations today, but when you get to the point where you need to establish a curve for a model, this is the tab where you do it. You also need to understand that curves can be assigned throughout inputs, mixes, and outputs. The next tab is global variables. Global variables are another one of those screens on OpenTX that might make you ask what you got yourself into. They're used in more advanced configurations, and the basic definition is that they are values that can be substituted throughout the radio. So for example, rather than configuring a weight of say 80 for your ailerons, you could say use global variable one, and then you can use a knob or a switch to change that global variable, which changes global variable one anywhere in the radio. So if you use GV1 for a weight, and then you change GV1 with a stick, you can change your weight while you're flying. You can also change your expo while you're flying. It's a very cool function. It takes a little bit of getting used to, to kind of understand and wrap your brain around it. But I just want you to understand where you can find them. The next tab is called logical switches. On every radio, you've got physical switches just like these. So when you move these switches, something happens in the radio. Logical switches are no different, except instead of physical, they're logical. So in the simplest form, logical switches simply evaluate information on the radio and they go on or off pending that evaluation. There are modifiers and complex evaluation criteria available. And as you learn OpenTX, you should definitely explore logical switches. They can be very powerful. And again, like so many other things on OpenTX, you do not need to use logical switches in order to fly your plane. It just gives you some advanced control techniques when you start getting to that point with your radio. The next tab is called special functions, similar to global functions, but only applicable to the model that we're currently configuring. So any special function you apply here stays with this model. It doesn't apply to other models. So special functions serve, special functions evaluate the condition of either a physical switch or a logical switch, and then they do something. For example, you can configure things like a timer reset or a throttle lock in special functions. The next tab is custom scripts. If you remember earlier, we were talking about configuring an S6R receiver with tools. That was a Lua script. So what a script does, it's kind of like a little tiny programming language that lets you do things like say, run telemetry on your screen or see a map from your GPS coordinates on the airplane. It's a highly customized feature set available on OpenTX. And as you can see on my radio, I don't even have any custom Lua scripts. The final tab is telemetry. Telemetry, you probably know, allows you to define telemetry sensors like variometers, battery voltage, airspeed, GPS coordinates. 
This is a very complex subject and highly dependent on specific radio and computer equipment being used in your model. So I'm not going to go into any re real detail on what telemetry options are, but this is the tab where those telemetry sensors are defined if you want to add telemetry to your radio. Okay, we're rounding third and heading for home. We're going to go back to the home screen by pressing return. And next up is model management. Model management is actually very simple. You get to model management by long pressing on the jog dial and then press model select. And that kind of brings you to a new little corner of OpenTX. In this section of the radio, you can create and delete models by pressing the jog dial. You see, I've got options here for create, duplicate, move create a category, delete a category. So this is where you manage your models on the radio. And you can select the model you want to work with. You can also move models from one category to another. And that's it for model management. Simple, right? The fourth major configuration category on OpenTX radios is screen management. We get to screen management by pressing the tele button. On this section of OpenTX, you can set up screens and manage data presented on your home screen. Think of your smartphone. Most smartphones allow you to swipe left or right from the home screen to see other screens. OpenTX does the same thing, except you don't swipe. You use the page key, page right or page left. Remember I said earlier, some radios have page right and left like this TX16S. Others have only one page key. If you have one page key, you can short press to go right and long press to go left. Screen management allows you to add screens. Each screen can contain different widgets. Widgets are programmed into OpenTX and they're graphical blocks representing different bits of information. So one widget might be an output monitor. Another might be a picture of your plane. Another might be a timer. So widgets allow you to arrange information from your radio however you want to see it. So you can see in my setup, I have just one screen. What I'll do is press page right and that moves my selection over to that little plus icon at the top. And when I click the jog dial, that adds a second screen. If I click page right, I can add a third screen. Let's set up a widget real quick. I've got page two selected. And I've got my cursor on setup widgets. I'll press the jog dial and notice I've got this big open area. So once I press the jog dial again, you'll notice the first widget pops up on the screen. Now I can move my jog dial to the right and I'll scroll through different widgets available on the radio. There's a good one, the output screen, let's select that. I'll just highlight that one and press the jog dial. And now I've got a nice output monitor is my page two. So I'll press return to go back to my home screen and notice there's no indicator that there's a second page. But if I click page right, there's my output monitor right there. If you notice on this top row, there's a couple of different icons showing the screen carved up in different dimensions. So this one has the right hand side going top to bottom and the left hand side split in half. This icon has the screen split right down the middle. This one carves the screen into four equal size boxes. And there are others too. But you get the idea. This is how you choose your widget layout. So if you just want one big widget like I did on page two, you leave it set on that first box. And that's what you get. One big widget for that page. Well, there you go. There are the four primary configuration categories in OpenTX. We looked at system options, model options, the model selection tool, and your screen setup. I hope this information has been useful to you. If it is, please consider hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell. For everybody else, leave a comment, thumbs up, check out my affiliate links in my t-shirt store. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy.